New logo, same epilepsy. Also, 30 seconds of logo. Establishing shots of Washington, D.C. are not complete without at least one monument and one jogger. On your left. Also, does Cap need to run laps to stay in shape? Isn't it that concoction of superhero steroids that keeps him powerful even after 60 years of being in a coma? I guess he could have gotten bored, but damn, go fight crime or something. Don't you say on your left. The running in the movie started on some bridge crossing the Potomac. How did Steve run the exact same course that Sam was running to lap him three times in three different locations? They weren't running around the reflecting pool the whole time, that's for damn sure. Internet, so helpful. Except for BuzzFeed. This is a funny list of things that Steve needs to catch up on, but who just randomly told him, check out Steve Jobs of Apple Inc.? What you learn may surprise you. Man, so glad they included the latitude and longitude, or else I would have been lost. Is he a superhero or is he born? Because in this opening sequence, it's tough to tell the difference. Warning, ride may cause vomiting. Sure, everything up to this point has been covert, done with a maximum amount of sensitivity. So it was about time Cap threw his shield through the wheelhouse so that the bad guy could be alerted to his presence. Badass or no, one measly kick is enough to keep Cap from nabbing this guy. Sure would have been great if he'd had his shield with him right now. Why you plus qu bouclier? Basic playground taunting is enough to enter Cap into this let's fight without weapons cliche. Also, how the f*** does Cap have time to learn French when he still hasn't even seen Star Trek? What the f*** is going on? Is Cap not a super soldier with super strength? Cap went toe-to-toe -to -toe with f***ing Iron Man in the Avengers, so why are regular human dudes suddenly a match for him? Yeah, but what are its coordinates? Oh. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. You trusted the safety of Earth to the Avengers you assembled to save New York, even to the point of blowing up a U.S. plane that was gonna bomb New York. So you trust people all the time, ass. Every week some punk would say, what's in the bag? What would he do? I don't know, Cap. Maybe if you'd let him finish the story, he'd tell you. Stark? Uh, he had a few suggestions once he got an up-close look at our old turbines. Marvel continues to think merely mentioning the other Avengers in these standalone movies will be all the audience needs to stop wondering why the other Avengers aren't actually helping out in this movie's crisis. The satellites can read a terrorist's DNA before he steps outside his spider hole. Even if I'm willing to give you that magic satellite, that also means you somehow have a database with the DNA of every person in the world matched to an identity. And that's not acceptable in any way at all. We've now seen enough movies with Chris Evans in them to start saying Chris Evans is on a motorcycle cliche. Steve goes to learn about himself before learning about Steve Jobs and Apple. Only one little boy recognizes Cap at his own exhibit. Best friends since childhood. Bucky Barnes and Steven Rogers were inseparable. Why the f*** would this childhood best friend and fellow soldier merit his own wing in the Captain America Museum? I know the movie wants to suddenly make Bucky super important, but that doesn't mean the world would have. It's the best that we can do is to start over. <coughs> Cap just happens to visit his would-have-been girlfriend right before her imminent death. Would we think less of this movie if they didn't have holograms talking to Nick Fury? Is this our future? I hope not. Holograms look awful in every movie, unless they're used for trickery in Thor The Dark World. Then they just don't make sense. A breach like this raises serious questions. Like Marvel poaches a secondary villain from the best DC movie ever. Even at 193 years old, Robert Redford can still act any of the rest of this movie's stars under the table. But you gotta get Iron Man to stop by my niece's birthday party. Iron Man 4, niece's birthday party. No wonder Downey didn't want to do it. Look who it is, the running man. Arnold Schwarzenegger must have that Benjamin Button condition then. This is help. Jeez, holograms on the car windshield too? That's not only useless, but what I call distracted driving. Recommend anesthetic injection. And also remind you that this high-tech state-of-the-art vehicle is a Chevy. These shady military goons brought in a battering ram instead of, say, I don't know, explosives to destroy this car. I'd like to see these guys shoot out the tires for once. Who knows, maybe they skimped on automatic tire inflation technology and you can kill Nick Fury instead of whatever this is. Why was he even bothering to drive this god car in the first place? Shady government goons take shooting lessons from the projections in Inception. Winter Soldier dude just happens to be waiting for Nick on this random street. Also, he's not only doing his best Joker from Dark Knight imitation, but also waiting all these needless minutes while his underling assassins flail around before stepping in to do the job himself. That seems like a perfectly handy weapon the other bad guys could have used earlier. He brought his lightsaber? That thing cut an escape tunnel through first his unkillable vehicle and second through the street and into the ground in like five seconds. Plus it was able to displace a giant pile of rubble that carving such a tunnel would create. Also, I suppose the Winter Soldier didn't just go ahead and climb down into the tunnel and chase after an extremely injured man with no weapons. He said, I guess my work is done here and bounced. Captain America is worldwide famous and has his own wing at the Smithsonian, but no fans or paparazzi are staking out his residence at all. It's probably because they respect his privacy, right? Is this the movie's end credit sequence? That's up to you. Bad guys finally find their aim when it's surprising to the audience. Don't trust anyone. I bet he means that asshole Walter Donovan from The Last Crusade. Also, other people you shouldn't trust. Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, or any of the other superheroes you would instantly call in this situation if you were a logical human being. Captain America is a dick to office spaces. Jump down, f***er! What the hell are you giving up for? 
How far could he possibly have gotten in the last three seconds? I mean, this is definitely an elaborate hoax, right? I can't imagine why Marvel would want to kill off Nick Fury, or Samuel L. Jackson saying, I don't want to do any more of these highly profitable movies. Steve pulls out his secret flash drive in full view because I guess he needs reminding that he has this flash drive in his pocket. Some of you may not be aware, but when a person dies, the hospital wheels them into a side room so that that person's employees can silently mourn the carcass for a few minutes. You need to take him. Because he's definitely not dead. I mean, why else would Maria Hill be in this movie? Other than to take Nick Fury to his secret bunker where he can pop out and introduce us to the events of Avengers 2. Strike, move it out! Never before has the timing of a concession vending machine refill job been so perfect. Also, this is either the worst hiding place in the world for a flash drive, or it's a biting indictment on how few people buy hubba bubba. Bad guys decide to be annoying and make the elevator stop down every floor to collect reinforcements. Movie villains send regular humans to try and kill Cap in an elevator because the movie doesn't want to fk. It only wants some cheap foreplay. He's headed for the garage. Lock down the bridge. Steve manages to run into the garage, get his motorcycle, drive off, and still get to the bridge in time before they lock it down. I'm confused. I know he's super strong and the shield is basically indestructible, but how is the shield also a boomerang? Is the movie saying he's just so gifted with hand-eye coordination that he always throws it perfectly so it careens back to him? Too bad shield only has one of those hover plane things. If someone tweets about this guy, I want to know about it. Tweeting. Captain Rogers has information regarding the death of Director Fury. He refused to share it. So we tried to kill him rather than arrest him and interrogate him. How did she know to come back to the hospital and check the vending machine? Nick Fury wasn't there anymore, she left before Cap hid the flash drive, and she's not one of the bad guys. Paranoia only works when the shady action makes sense. Most of the intelligence community doesn't believe he exists. The ones that do call him the Winter Soldier. Roll credits. Oh, I was escorting a nuclear engineer out of Iran. Somebody shot out my tires. Definitely not any bad guys then. The drive has a level 6 homing program, so as soon as we boot up, S.H.I.E.L.D. will know exactly where we are. The question is, with such an important flash drive, why don't they have a homing beacon that works without booting up? How much time will we have? Uh, about nine minutes from... Now. Nine minutes? For a level 6 homing program? Jesus, how slow is level 3? That is a huge-ass f***ing arbitrary window of time. How do we know they're evil, ladies and gentlemen? Because they're in black trucks riding single file and tailgating. S.H.I.E.L.D.'s only available agents to pursue number one fugitive Steve Rogers are all the way back at headquarters. So I guess Natasha just calculated the drive time from headquarters to the mall to come up with that ridiculous nine-minute window. Public displays of affection make people very uncomfortable. Bad guys don't notice obvious incognito good guys because the power of other people's boners is stronger. Funhouse Mirror Chris Evans. The coordinates are the same base where Cap was trained, but he's still only slightly cautious. Again, if he'd spent more free time catching up on movies instead of memorizing non-fiction bullshit, he'd know he's walking right into a trap. There's Stark's father. Howard. Where the f*** is Roger Sterling, assholes? How are you just gonna recast younger Howard Stark and forget all about the badass you had playing the character earlier? Jesus, first they had to trace the drive's origin, then they had to spot the out-of-place fake munitions bunker, then they had to notice the small rush of air indicating a passageway. I'm beginning to think this villain that wants to be found doesn't actually want to be found. Even if her advanced cell phone has an app that can do this, it's still only indicating the four most often pressed numbers, not the order they're pressed in. So, Natasha instantly pressing them in the correct order is a middle finger, and I'm just gonna give you one right back. Shall we play a game? It's from a movie that was really popular. I saw it. Steve's seen f***ing war games before seeing Star Trek. What we did not realize was that if you try to take that freedom, they resist. You honestly believe that? Did you sit around in a room somewhere thinking, you know what I love when people tell me what to do? The new Hydra grew a beautiful parasite inside S.H.I.E.L.D. Why is the evil Hydra science guy's brain computer giving up an exposition dump to the movie's heroes? Is it because the audience needs to be filled in on shit? Okay, let's lure Steve to this place so we can tell him everything about our plan before killing him. Brilliant! That's impossible. S.H.I.E.L.D. would have stopped you. Accidents will happen. Is that what he's calling Nick Fury's death? Because no investigator would consider hot lead blasting through an apartment wall to be an accident. At least I hope not. Project Insight requires insight. So I wrote an algorithm. What kind of algorithm? I don't know, Natasha. Maybe if you let the disembodied brain of Dr. Zola finish, he'd tell you. <laughs> they survived this. Also, Pierce calculates this plan to ridiculous detail, except the idea that Cap might think quick enough to survive the missile attack. Call in the asset. Why not just call in the asset in the first f***ing place? Also, why fire only one missile? That's Captain America, right? Maybe you should think about overkill in this case. I'm going to go, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Pierce's maid decides she'll yell through the wall right next door instead of walking five feet to see him face to face because, man, would that ever be bad if she witnessed the Winter Soldier on the other side? Sorry. They already cost me Zola. Actually, you cost you Zola. There was no need to blast the building he was in. You could have easily waited until they got outside for a surprise attack. You could have just gone ahead and used this dude in the first place. Oh, Renata, I wish you would have knocked. Villain kills innocent person unnecessarily because it's time for the audience to know he's evil cliche. 
hey, I met you once while running, and then again at a recovery group meeting, so I automatically know where you live. I mean, sh did they even exchange full names? Man, it sure was nice that Steve ran the exact same route that Sam did that one random morning. A useful new friend is useful. What, would you use a stealth shoe? No, these. Top secret army wings, to which I, as a civilian, will instantly be granted access. Or at the very least, my theft of them will be glossed over completely. Passing truck driver honks his horn because assholes who get thrown into traffic are a menace to society. Also, are they saying that the Winter Soldier can fly? Where the hell did he come from? Later we find out there's a jeep full of bad guys, but that jeep is way far back in the action. So he didn't come from the jeep. The Winter Soldier could have taken out this car no problem, with that thing he used earlier to blow up Nick Fury's SUV. But now we have to know how badass he is with the number of unnecessary stunts he can pull off. There should be a tremendous traffic jam going the other way after that huge truck slammed into Sitwell just a second ago. Rubberneckers would be out in force. Um, when your body careens and tumbles across asphalt like this, you get up with most of your skin gone. But in the movie, he only gets a few scratches, because Falcon. Now that the hanging on top of the car cliche bullshit didn't work, now it's time for a grenade launcher, something that could totally have done the job in the first place. Oh, good. You have more of these. I was beginning to worry you only had the one. Anyway, good timing. Okay, so Natasha is running underneath a four-lane bridge. She's running. Running. More running. Still running. How f***ing wide is this bridge, and how long does it take someone to run underneath it? Yeah, Cap, that fall must have made you groggy. We've seen you survive worse, no problem, but sure, you go ahead and take a rest now. You deserve it. Okay, so we know that Steve is in this bus, but the bad guys can't know that he's in the bus. Winter Soldier dude shot Captain America, and he went flying over the bridge, but no one was around to confirm where he landed, and they spent the last couple of minutes trying to kill Natasha and Sam. Would this incredibly high-powered weapon be able to fire so many rounds at the bus without at least a few making it through and killing Cap? Because at the bottom of buses are that f***ing strong, why are they even bothering to try this? And why aren't more things made out of bus bottoms? Also, yet another weapon the bad guys pull out that could have ended this a whole lot earlier. Also, DC police might be bad, but this is the most negligent police force since the NOPD in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Steve jumps out of the bus, and what do you know, his shield is lying right there. <laughs> Tardiness. Also, gotta give Sam something to do, right? Why not leave one guy on the bridge who has no business being up here so he can fight him? Bad guys keep shooting at Cap's shield as he walks towards them and uses said shield to deflect bullets and kill them all. Instead of, you know, shooting at his legs. Also, sure it was convenient to the run length of this movie that the Winter Soldier decided to go after Natasha instead of killing Cap himself right here and now. Police response time? Just shy of a pizza delivery. Hey, remember when you were on top of the car a minute ago? Dropping one of these babies in it and simply jumping off the car would have been an easy thing to do to accomplish your mission. Do any of these people know what the way is to stay out of it? Man, they're shoehorning as many characters from the first movie as they can into this, aren't they? Next up, DNA strands of Hugo Weaving connected to an oak tree that talks. Also, surprise, except so not surprised that it makes you wonder why they even bothered to put this reveal so late in the film. Sam swoops in to save Cap because he totally knew where these guys were after being on top of the bridge the whole time. Ah, so Bucky escaped in the smoke of that explosion like a cheesy magician then? Gotcha. He's the Burt Winterstone soldier. Where the f*** have these assholes been the whole time? Hanging back? Yeah, I know he notices the chopper in a minute and tells them to put their guns down so they don't get on the news murdering Cap, but no one cared about the news during the whole Bucky thing. And no one knew about the chopper at this point when they're walking up telling him to get on his knees. So what the f***ing f***? Not here. But maybe in the van on the way over to wherever you're going, right? We need to get a doctor here. <laughs> Maria Hill waits until Sam asks for medical attention before finally revealing herself. Was she going to wait until the car stopped to tell everyone, Hey guys, friend here to help. Also, I see now, I guess the reason they didn't kill them and only took them prisoner was so that we could have this surprise Agent Hill rescue. Fine. Okay, whatever. I know you guys all love this movie and that's fine, but I hope you realize it makes about as much sense as a Terry Gilliam fever dream. Who's this guy? He's the future new Captain America. Duh. Well, at least his character is. They'll probably replace the actor with Don Cheadle. Three holes, start digging. I see these bad guys went to the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull school of putting the heroes in the rear vehicle so no one can see the escape. Also, why entrust anyone except yourself to watch these guys in the back of the van? That was bad intelligence. Very bad intelligence. Wait, was this magic van underneath the street in the tunnel they escaped from? Or did they escape through the bottom of the prison van and then run out the back without anyone noticing them and then find another van somewhere? Because either scenario is sinful as shit. I promise this is the first time I've seen this movie. Unfortunately for this movie, I've seen lots of other movies. They cut you open, your heart stopped. Tetrodotoxin B. Hey, that's the same bullshit toxin Liam Neeson used in the 18. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have that convenient use, but at least it sounds good, doesn't it? Evil Medical Lab is inside a bank safe deposit box vault because it looks cool. Sergeant Barnes. Bucky! Yeah, about that. Remember in the first Captain America when they were on the train? Well, Dr. Zola was also on that train. And they caught him, not long after Bucky's fall, and they took him to an interrogation room where Tommy Lee Jones ate steak in front of him. He definitely wasn't there for Bucky's winter soldier surgery. 
And I'm calling bullshit on anyone else walking around looking for Winter Soldier candidates at that time. Bunch of superheroes come up with a Mission Impossible style plan involving swapping out guidance chips, instead of a plan where Cap infiltrates the carriers one at a time and punches their engines until they fall out of the sky. Also, seriously, the only reason Fury isn't calling Iron Man right now is because Robert Downey Jr. is too damn expensive. So thanks, Marvel, for giving us this massive cinematic universe that only makes sense during the Avengers films. I'm with you to the end of the line, pal. Irony. Also, what a great scene. It shows us the friendship that we already knew existed and adds extra time to a movie that's over two hours. Superb. He doesn't know you. He will. Because the power of friendship is stronger. Oh, man. I am so fired. I wish. Also, why did Cap need to steal this museum suit? When he escaped S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, he had the suit on. And the next time we see him is in the hospital wearing civvies. So obviously he hid the current suit somewhere and should be able to get it back. Instead, movie has him steal one because f***ing Stan Lee. We are in final launch sequence. Well, of course you are. The heroes have to show up in time to stop it, so you couldn't have done this any earlier, that's for sure. Kate falls for this. I guess they consulted Goldeneye on how to build humongous shit underwater. Things! Gymnastics! Dodging! I was just about to give this movie some sin points back for having this surprise badass older lady destroying all these dudes. But then this Mission Impossible shit happens and, well, I'm suddenly thrust back into the Brain Dead Academy School of Arts. Also, once again, technology that could be extremely useful for both sides is used for one surprise attack for movie purposes. State-of-the-art next-generation helicarriers are hella bad at aiming. <laughs> Well, even if one of those one-at-a-time dudes had fired their guns, this whole thing would be over. Bam. Evil wins. Hydra Watch Star Wars saw the completely unguarded glaring weakness in the Death Star and said, Hey, let's set up our own vulnerability to be similarly deserted. Couldn't they just throw a grenade in one of these things and do the exact same job quicker? Later, they're gonna blow these helicarriers out of the sky anyway, so why don't they just blow up the control panel? Why Bucky ditched the goggles and mouth guard part of his uniform? Is it because Steve knows his true identity now? Because Bucky doesn't know that. Remember how he was brainwashed again last night? Disabling the encryption is an executive order. It takes two alpha-level members. Don't worry. Company's coming. On cue, explanatory helicopter lands just outside right as she says this. What the f*** is going on? Fury has a separate security clearance for his f***ed up eyeball? How would it be connected in the system to his identity but not noticed by Pierce when he was wiping former Director Fury's security clearance? Oh, come on. You have just evaded tons of anti-aircraft fire earlier. Now you're gonna get nabbed by something as clunky as a grappling hook? Winter Soldier says, f*** it, we'll let gravity decide this. Uh, no. There wasn't nearly enough time for that parachute to break your fall. I see this helicarrier was built with movie fights in mind. Unless you want a two-inch hole in your sternum, I put that gun down. Why didn't you just do this before? Like, when this was happening? Sure, she punched you in the face, but how long would it have taken to get that handy remote and fry her ass? That was armed the moment you pinned it on. But why? Were you afraid that when the council members learned what you were doing with Insight, they'd blast their way out of S.H.I.E.L.D. and go tell the world about your plans? I really need some f***ed up way to make sure they don't do that. I know, badges that burn through sternums. God, I'm a genius. <laughs> Discount Rocky 3. And the movie hasn't even ended yet. I see getting choked unconscious gave Bucky his aim back. Fire when ready. Man, I hope they do that thing where they're ready to fire, but it still takes them a while just to add tension. Firing in three. Fire now. But why? You have these ships locked now. They pose no danger. This is a hero sacrifices himself to save the world cliche, but the world is already safe. Jeez, Michael Bay thinks this sequence of explosions is excessive. I guess it's lucky none of these ships crashed in downtown Washington, right? Also, by the way, is anyone in Washington giving a shit about this? Just a minute ago, we saw these things targeting everyone in the city, including the president, who was nice and cozy at the White House, apparently unconcerned about all the explosions he was hearing earlier. And none of the debris landed on or endangered anyone except bad guys. The final helicarrier somehow has a sense of poetic justice, deciding to crash directly into the bad guy headquarters. Geez, they're still fighting. Why hasn't anybody won yet? Why not? He had no idea where the helicopter was, and the helicopter had no idea where he was, and even though he lands headfirst into a helicopter door, he survives this. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll find that one-of-a-kind item before the next Avengers movie. Somehow. Gives him with you to the end of the line. Well, here's one of our favorites. The old character repeats dialogue back at the person who said it to him, this time with extra subtext routine. It's a classic. Annoyance. Movie continues to think I haven't seen other movies before and pretends Steve isn't going to be saved at the last minute by Bucky. As you can see, the US military, DC police, firefighters, and so on have jumped all over this crisis in downtown Washington. It's a trick, Steve! It's 70 more years into the future. That guy you think is Sam is wearing one of those things Natasha wore a minute ago to pretend that he's Sam. You're not going to put any of us in a prison. You know why? Probably because you're so gorgeous, dollface. Haha, <laughs> Pulp Fiction reference. He'll probably strike down upon me with great diehard with a vengeance and Nick Furious anger, am I right? Masturbatory fanboy evil weapon technology that half the audience will have to Google to learn about. Elizabeth Olsen isn't my girlfriend in this mid credit sequence. End credit scene expects me to be surprised that Bucky is out there, but 
damn, we saw him drag Cap to the edge of the water and walk off into the sunset. So, I mean, yeah, totally. He's out there. Also, in the movie's second end credit sequence, Bucky goes to learn about himself before he even learns about Steve Jobs and Apple. There is one more thing. Top Mercs led by this guy, XDGSE. We are an unarmed freighter. We have two skiffs approaching with armed intruders. Potential piracy situation. Now! And I will strike down a with great vengeance and anger. ELN rebels took the embassy and Security got me out. How come you didn't get caught? I went out for pizza. Then I went to Canada. People, do you have any idea who you're dealing with? This is Jason Bourne. You are nine hours behind the toughest target you have ever tracked. I-E-S. Yes. Shall we play a game? Hello, Neil. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the Matrix. I've been waiting for you. The battle station is heavily shielded and carries a firepower greater than half the Starfleet. Its defenses are designed around a direct, large-scale assault. A small, one-man fighter should be able to penetrate the outer defense. Attention all S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, this is Steve Rogers. I may not be a master builder. I may not have a lot of experience fighting or leading or coming up with plans or having ideas in general. Do you believe it now, Trinity? <laughs> 